Hello everyone, it's Rio CloudSync. In today's session, we'll be accessing Microsoft Enter ID and looking at the creation of new users from an internal user member type as well as an external user member type, i.e. inviting users from outside into our organization for Microsoft 365 collaboration, also known as B2B business to business. Let's first look at an introduction to user accounts. Before you can create a user or invite them into your tenancy, you need to understand the authentication methods and access into the organization. First things first, if I was to access identity and scroll down to users and then select all users, this will list my directory and the user accounts which reside within my organization for both a user type member and external. We have the options to filter via user type by selecting add filter and then selecting user type. However, let's look at the creation of new users. So we can create an internal user as well as an external user. So we can select new user here and we can select to create a new user, which we have an option to create a new user from both an internal user and an internal guest. Then we also have the option to invite an external user from the outside into our organization as either an external member or an external guest. Let's look at what's new in terms of Microsoft Enter ID, formerly known as Azure Active Directory. So what's new? In terms of general availability, we now have enhanced creation of users and invite user experiences. The type of this change was change feature and the service category was listed under user management. We now have increased number of properties admins are able to define when creating and inviting a user into the Entra admin portal, bringing the UI to parity with our create creation of users through the APIs. Additionally, admins can now add users to groups or administrative units and assign roles straight from the creation of the new user pane. So if we go back to the Entra admin console, we look at the new users, we can see we can create a new user from an internal member type and we can create an external user. If we look at the differences in terms of parity here, so if we look at properties of a B2B guest user, so we've got the user type property listed under guest and member. Guest, we could be an external guest, use an external Azure AD account, social identity, or other external identity providers to sign in. Most external users fall into this category, i.e. guest external. We then have guest internal guest, which has an account in your Entry ID directory, but only guest level access into your organization. This is often a legacy guest user created before availability of the Azure Entry ID business to business collaboration. So this is our guest column. We then also have a member column, which is member external, using an external account to authenticate that has a member level access into your organization. Common, common scenario is multi-tenant organization, which we went through in a previous vid video in terms of the configuration and setup of multi-org. And we also have member, internal member, which is probably the most commonly used one, which has an account in your Azure AD directory and a member level access into your organization generally considered employees of your organization. And that's how, they, how you differentiate between the, the, the four different user type properties. However, if we go back to Enter ID and we look at the creation of new users, we'll look at creating a new user from an internal perspective. So if I was to create a new user, I would have to select create new user, but what type of role do I need? Well, to create a new user, we could be a user admin or we could be a global admin. But if we're using the principle of least privilege, we want to be user administrator. So we can select create new user. If I was to invite a user, I would need to be a guest inviter. And if I was to assign a Azure AD role through the wizard of creation, creating a new user, I would need to be a global admin or some sort of privileged role to be able to assign the Azure Active Directory role based access control role to this said user in principle. So this is where we're into the wizard now. So we can select under identity, user principal name. This will list our domain names, um, our fully approved domain names, which we uploaded a TXT record to our DNS registrar uh, to prove we own the domain. If you've done such, the domain will then appear in the list and we can filter between the, the two or three domains you have uh, verified. Of course, you're gonna have your, your, your default directory domain name there initially, which is dot Microsoft domain name, um, if you haven't approved of any custom domain names. However, the new the new UX, the new UI provides you the capability to, to, to select between the, the different domain names. So we select .microsoft domain and we can uh, type in Rio Hindle, for example, as our UPM. We also have an option to select a mail nickname, which is just our alias, okay? 
or our, our secondary um, kind of uh, SMTP address. We can um, approve of this to derive from the UPN itself. If I was to unselect this, we can customize the mail nickname, i.e. customize the alias associated with this uh, primary UPN or primary SMTP address. However, we're going to keep this uh, quite simplistic and we're going to derive the UPN from the mail nickname, uh, from the UPN, sorry. We then have an option to select display name. This is uh, usually your, your full name. Um, in this instance, I'm just going to type in Rio Hindu. And with, then we have an option to auto-generate the password. Good thing about the new UI allows you to uh, copy the, the auto-generated password straight from this um, uh, this uh, button here, um, of which you can then paste into a text file and uh, encrypt, decrypt, um, so forth. We also have the option to untick this and uh, set a manual password, i.e. I could just type in any password I wanted and then provide this to the user. Of course, the password requirements for your organization will take precedence, so you'd have to adhere to your password requirements internally. However, in this instance, we're going to just auto-generate a password. I don't need to know the password as I'm not signing into this account. And then we have an option to enable the account. Maybe the, this is a new user and they haven't started as of yet. Therefore, you do not want to enable the account, okay? Uh, as that could uh, pose a security risk to your organization. So we'll leave it, uh, well, we can leave it enabled because I'm not going to be signing into this account. I'm going to be delayed, deleted it straight after. Then we can move to the next. This is where we can fill in our, I then have the user properties pane uh, present itself in which I need to type in a first name and last name, which in this uh, example will be Rio Hindu. And then I have the option to define the user type, uh, which we went through earlier, either member or guest. Um, we have an option to add a certificate for uh, user authentication um, and then we can uh, populate our job information, i.e. job title, uh, company name, department. Um, if you're looking at filtering your user accounts uh, moving forward, we can put in your employee ID, employee type, if they're a permanent employee or on a, on a contract. Uh, we looked at employee hire date in the, the last video regarding uh, dynamic uh, membership rules for Microsoft 365 security groups and filtering it that way and being able to pre-populate user accounts into groups. We can look at the hire date um, option. Um, An office location, uh, people are remote as of now, uh, maybe um, hybrid or fully remote. We need to understand where people are working, okay? And as, as in what dates they're working, uh, either uh, in the office or, or at home. Um, we can select the manager, um, so the reporting manager, of which you'll see the organizational um, hierarchy when you're, when you're accessing the likes of Microsoft Teams. Um, SharePoint, uh, Viva, for example, um, th this will be presented in that manner. Um, you then have the option for contact information, so your your address, where do you reside, where, 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 where's your location, do you have an associated mobile phone or business telephone people can uh, contact you on, um, and any additional um, emails, you may add an additional email uh, address for the likes of uh, self service password reset, okay, as an additional authentication uh, method. If we scroll down, we also have the parental controls for age group and consent, usually uh, used within educational institutes, i.e. the likes of schools um, and higher education, uh, being able to refine uh, minor, non-adult or, or adult, um, and the consent provided, either granted, denied or not required, maybe for the, for the use of a GDPR, for example. Uh, one one important setting is the user user location, um, sorry, usage location, i.e. the assignment of licenses. You do need to uh, assign a usage location to your user account to be able to assign a license. If you were not to assign a usage location and try and assign a license, you would get an error message saying you need to assign a usage location as uh, the, the, the Microsoft 365 billing mechanism needs to understand where you reside to be able to bill you in the, the correct currency and to make sure the, the, the SKU you are requiring um, is available in your geographical region. Um, so in this instance, I'm going to select United Kingdom. And then we can scroll to assignments, and this is where we get uh, uh, three options. Uh, to add, add the user account to administrative unit, okay? To scope out either who can administer um, stuff, uh, properties for this user account, or restrict the this user in terms of role assignment. Um, we can add this user to a Microsoft 365 security group, 
okay, to be able to segment them across our organization, maybe departmental. And then we have the option for roles. Do we want to add a privileged role? And if we revert back to what I said at the beginning in terms of uh, being able to assign roles to users within the creation of the new user pane, we even need to be a global administrator or a privileged role administrator to be able to, to assign the likes of um, Azure AD roles to, to user account. And then we can go to review and create, just review all the, the properties we've set throughout the, uh, the, the, the workflow and then just press create. And with that, you'll see that user populate in your, your directory um, of which you can then log in with the first time credentials. Okay, any any questions, please do let me know, but this was just a high level video in terms of some of the changes uh, Microsoft have made since uh, public preview to GA. Thank you very much.